when you're in those really difficult moments, when you really have nothing but yourself and your grit and your resilience to go by, you realize what's important to you, what your values and principles are, and who you really are. You're leading the way right now in, in, in when it comes to endurance and mindset shift and all kinds of stuff. And you know, when I think about the audience as a whole, the number one thing we could all improve upon is this uh, concept of resiliency and this concept yeah. of, you know, kind of, I would say from early stages, like getting out of your own way. Like how did yeah. you, first of all, how did you find your way into this work? Well, it was quite interesting because I spent so much time in the endurance space myself doing mm -hmm. the work in there and noticing that when you're in those really difficult moments, that's where you learn the most about yourself. Yeah. When you're really in the uh, questioning everything, when you really have nothing but yourself and your grit and your resilience to go by, you realize what's important to you, what your values and principles are, and who you really are. I mean, I like to say, and it's not my quote, but who you are in adversity is mm -hmm. who you are, right? Yeah. When you're facing those obstacles, when you've sort of broken down and endurance does that, that's why I like to say, I use endurance as a vehicle to mm -hmm. get to that deeper conversation of mindset yeah. because, you know, it's just a tool on how to get to the place where you're broken down. Well, we then get to know ourselves better and sort of yeah. see like, wow, that's actually an angle that I didn't think of myself as. Yeah. And then it applies into all areas of our life, whether work, family, personal development, however it is, when you know yourself that well, right? You're going to be able to have a superpower almost because I know what it's going to be like in those stressful yeah. situations. I know what I'm going to be like when work gets out of hand or my kids are, you know, blowing up around me and I need to stay patient and calm and observant and respond, not just react. Yeah. And so the more we can get reps in that space, self-created, let's say endurance wise, the better we are going to be in other spaces. And that's just sort of the space I started expanding upon. Yeah. No, I love it. I was actually thinking too, is it, I was thinking about the, when I train really hard. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm more of a gym rat crossfitter. That, oh, that kind of, yeah. that's kind of like my, my jam. Um, I realized that when I wipe myself out in some cases, physically, mm -hmm. it actually heightens me mentally. It seems like it's almost like I go into, I think runners call it a runner's high. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. There's, there's just moment of clarity or something like that that kind of comes down to it. So in, in many cases, is our, phys our physicality directly tied to our mentality? Well, there's, and, and that you, I thought you were going to finish the sentence differently, mm -hmm. but our physicality directly influences our psychology mm. and vice versa. Our psychology 100% impacts our physiology. Okay. So mind over matter, right? Brain yeah. and the mind can dictate what the body will do, as well as our, you know, physicality, as you're describing it, for sure, those flow states, those moments where everything's in sync, it's easiest to relate to in athletics, right? We're designed to be physical animals. Yeah. Right. And that's why when you go to the uh, a CrossFit gym, or when you go to work out, you're turning on all the signals that evolutionarily made us who we are today. Mm -hmm. And it's only in our physicality that we have this opportunity that yeah. all those signals, our lizard brain and on, <laughs> yeah. gets turned on more and more and more because that's how we survived, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a, it definitely ties into it. And it's just such a great um, insertion into our lives. And what I mean by that, it's like a trivial pursuit um, circle, right? Mm -hmm. All the puzzle pieces that fit in, you know, work, family, personal life, you know, community, church, whatever it is. Yeah. Then there's the one of those pieces is our athletic self. Yeah. Right. And but if you get that athletic self into that pie, yeah. you're already starting, it leaks into all the other ones. And that's why, you know, that's why I love it so much for sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of our audience, you know, one of the things I've been very adamant about on previous shows with the audience specifically is you have to have some outlet of endurance style training, right? Yeah. Whatever your level is, right? So you can be a very beginner, you can be all the way up to yourself with Olympics and everything behind your name and everything. But one of the things that I've seen specifically is about 50% of the entrepreneurs or business leaders or achievers that I'm aware of, they do everything with excellence except take care of themselves. 
Yeah. And I had yeah. this mentor, my very first mentor that um, people on the show have heard me talk about before. Um, he had this moment. I remember going to the hospital. He was on his deathbed. It was 2003. He had his knees replaced and developed pneumonia while he was in the hospital. Mm. So my father uh, and I go up there to see him. And of course, he had mentored me personally um, just because he didn't want me to kind of like make the same decisions that my father did. And my father was sitting there talking about all the accolades, everything that he had achieved. You know, you you became a multimillionaire out of nowhere. You you mm -hmm. you built homes all over North and South Carolina. You've traveled mm -hmm. all over the world. You can buy anything you want. You can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. Yeah. Um, and I'll never forget this for long as, as long as I live. Uh, Steve takes the mask off his face because he had one of those, those masks on his face. You know, you could see the puff. Oxygen. Yeah, he takes it off his fat off his face. He goes, "What good is any of that? I have no health." Yeah. Right. And I say that to say that uh, regardless if somebody wants to pursue it uh, at the level that you and Rich and everybody else does, where it's it's true endurance and Iron Man and strength and stuff like that, yeah. um, everyone should have some level of deep training that they're doing, you know, mind, body, spirit, from my perspective. Yeah. In fact, one of the things that I've actually heard you say as it, as it relates to mindset specifically on a couple of prior interviews was that the mind often gets in the way of what we know that we should be doing. Like, I, 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 um, the mind gets in the way of what the body knows to do. Yeah. Right. That, that to me is the essence already of, um, a lot of this with regards to mindset, mm -hmm. the mind often gets in the way, especially from a physicality standpoint of what the body knows to do. And like I yeah. said, it's been doing this forever, but there's many angles you can come at this health is wealth is sort of the, the cliche term too, but you know, and it's getting more traction, whether you talk to a yeah. Peter Atiyah, whether you talk to an Andrew Huberman, whether you, whether you talk to sort of the bigger um, guys in, and, and, and women in the space, this whole uh, pyramid of sleep, nutrition, and exercise, if you yeah. take care of those three, right, then you are really going to live from a longevity standpoint. You're setting yourself up. You increase the likelihood. It's not guaranteed, yeah. but you increase the likelihood dramatically. And only one thing, like I said, with the signals, hits them all so powerfully, and that is exercise. That is movement. Yeah. And another angle you just came at also was with, you said the word endurance. Now, a lot of people uh, relate to endurance as like these crazy ultra runners are doing mm -hmm. things for days and hours and multi-state. No, it's more about doing something long enough that the monkey in your mind can calm down. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So even if you go on a walk with like, I walk every night with my dogs, like it takes a good 15 minutes to just clear the crap out from the day. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then all of a sudden, and it might only be five minutes, but you get this clarity for like five mm -hmm. minutes. You're like, Whoa, there it is. Like, all yeah. right, now the day's behind me. Now I can just sort of be myself and think. Yeah. And I love that because everybody, I, and that's why I, I live in this space because I want everybody to experience that. And once they feel that, and once they get that, and once they see how easy it is to achieve in your own personal way, endurance, yeah. whatever we want, however we want to get there, um, it's it's a tool that is so effective to use in all the aspects yeah. of your life. Well, I've also realized it seems to me that um, if you choose to endure, meaning endure, you know, think mm -hmm. beyond your your current level of, you know, I guess yeah. performance, right? You're yeah. going to get stronger over time. Yeah. So it's not a matter if you're going to endure. It's a matter of how you're going to endure. So you're going to yeah. endure by choice. You're going to do it endure by necessity. Yeah. Um, both of them breed pain, but only one of them turns into sacrifice that takes you to some level of new level of success, right? Yeah. So as you're kind of looking at all that, and I was just, I was thinking about this, most entrepreneurs that I know, they get stuck on a regular basis, especially when they're trying to go uh, rat wheel, like they're trying to build it from here and they're trying to go there and they're, oh, yeah. you know, they're just all over the place. Um, it's really, really easy to get sucked into the tactics of the day rather than you protecting your day, right? Yeah. And for me, most of them that I've worked with at some point in time, they they run in these situations where they're continually getting brain fog, but the brain fog, brain fog, brain yeah. fog, brain fog, right? Continually. Yeah. I've noticed that if I don't ex exercise routinely, I I actually I personally exercise six days a week. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know if I don't, then I actually get thrown off. Yeah. Is there any science or any work that you've done so far of uh exercise and how it relates to uh overcoming brain frog brain frog? 
brain fog, right? Yeah. Is, there, is there anything that you, you've seen? Oh, for sure. Right? There's there's a lot of science that points to that. And oftentimes I come in from it from the fog of fatigue. Now mm -hmm. that fatigue can come from work hours, right? We yeah. don't even realize we're in it, right? You're in the yeah. forest. You can't even see the trees. But yeah, once sure. you clear out of that, you're like, man, I love this routine so much better where I'm working out in the morning, then I go about my day. For a lot of founders and entrepreneurs and startups, especially here, I'm in the Bay Area, so just outside of Silicon Valley. Like a lot of the clients- <laughs> There's a startup every corner. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And every coffee shop, they're filled with them. Um, it's, it's find the routine in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Process saves us from the deficiency of our intentions is a quote I, I love to use, right? Mm -hmm. If you have that process in there, that way, whatever you're intending, at least you have an infrastructure in place to achieve the outcomes you desire, yeah. right? If I desire to be healthier and fitter and stronger and more perseverant, then I got to build that intention into a process, into yeah. a routine, into infrastructure. So yes, there's that. And But from a, from a brain fog aspect, until you're out of it, you don't realize you're in it. Yeah. And we always say tomorrow, we always say, oh, I'll start that. Up. It's just project here and yeah. life get in the way there. It's like you're, you you wake up two, three years later and you're like, you know, it's now even harder to get back into the routine. Yeah. So, it, you know, and it doesn't need to be a big thing. 20 minutes, 30 minutes here and there. Like I have a, a client of mine. Yeah, he's, you know, from CrossFit experience, um, he does the Murph, a lot of the Murph stuff. And he's mm -hmm. now looking to not only eventually get to the world record, but for now, last year he did 10 Murphs in 12 hours. Mm -hmm. This year he wants to do 12 Murphs in 12 hours. <laughs> okay. And he wants to break the record of, I think it's right now 19 Murphs in 24 hours. Jeez. So he wants to get 20 Murphs in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The dude mm -hmm. runs a startup. He has yeah. no time. His wife is pregnant six months. Like his life is like about to <laughs> get even smaller, right? Endurance for about from five different directions. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But like I look at his training and he's like in between meetings, he has 15 minutes. Look, like, he'll bang out, you know, 50, 60 pull-ups and push-ups and sit-ups yeah. and stuff like that and squats. Like it's like, all right, that 15 minute window. Like it yeah. just and getting a sweat on and what it does for your clarity when you go into the next meeting or get on the next call and need to have a sort of a brain dump with a bunch of your team. It's totally different if you've thrown some physicality into it, right? It gets the juices flowing, gets the blood flowing and blood flow in the brain. Yeah. It quickly creates a lot. When you light up certain parts of your brain, well, now things are really going and you're going to show up completely differently. Yeah, no, I love that. In fact, I was curious. All right, so my normal, um, I have a, I actually have a planned replenishment cycle. I'm weird, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, I, I know I go hard at a week, right? Yeah. I, I try to do everything with excellence, whatever I'm focused on. I try to focus on yeah. one thing uh, to knock out at any given moment. Um, yeah. But then I will also realize that that's how you you quickly get burnout if you're all go and no rest, right? You, you, yeah. So. My replenishment cycle is is uh, answering really three questions. What am I doing? Where am I going? And who am I doing it with? If I'm doing it with anybody at all, mm -hmm. right? If it's is is it reflection time? Is it? Um, but one of the things that I've that has been increasing my mental uh, focus mm -hmm. um, is actually just as much exercise as it is meditation and like a prayer state. Oh yeah, right. Talk to me a little bit about the kind of that bring it like pulling it all together because i find that it's, all, it's almost like as entrepreneurs and, and aspiring leaders and stuff like that we feel guilty when we're not working on the thing just like your your buddy's yeah. doing you know he's, he's going after the murph but he's also building an amazing startup yeah. plus he's got a, yeah. like right it's it's hard to find that balance like so talk to me a little bit about kind of how we can kind of center ourselves to you know perform at even higher levels well let me ask you this what is the one hour or hour and a half or 75 minutes, 50 minutes a day that you have to yourself? Well, it's when you're working out, yeah. right? Yeah. Oftentimes, so it's your time, well, like, like I like to call it, to work in, not just work out. Ooh, I like that. Right? And so yeah. that's the time I have in my head. That's the time I can spend sort of reflecting, thinking like, how'd that meeting go? Or what would I want to get out of it? While you're, you know, walking, running, rucking on a treadmill or whatever it is, or out for, a, mm -hmm. you know, doing hill repeats. The thing is, you can't be too hard of an effort. Like at the gym, it's not always ideal because you're thinking about the reps, you're thinking about the movement, you're thinking about your yeah. breathing, you're thinking about getting this weight up, push, pull, whatever it is. So it's got to be something a little bit more monotonous like mm -hmm. a walk, 
like a ruck, like a yeah. run, right? Like on some time on the treadmill, your cardio time. But that's that, where you're like, is it part of because you're you're in you're in a natural environment? You're not in a box. You're actually you're actually out in nature. Um, well, a treadmill, as you know, can be pretty mind numbing as well. Yeah. So your mind wanders. Yeah. Um, yes, being out in nature is a big part of that. That forest bathing concept and all the all the things around that. Mm -hmm. There's a there's some psychology around it that a lot of people seem to like a lot better these days, and that is that there's this sort of the ego, the small mind, when mm -hmm. you're walking, when you're running, when you're hiking, is at rest, is is occupied. Excuse me, it's paying attention to the the footing and the next yeah. step and so forth, and it's just so boring. It almost lulls itself to sleep, paying attention to that. So that mm -hmm. this higher consciousness, your subconscious, your creativity, mm -hmm. the, all that can sort of come to to rise yeah that's sort of where they are with regards to psychology and like why the great writers and so on from emerson to thoreau to even nietzsche and young they would go on walks mm -hmm. they would go on long walks to sort of get those juices flowing get that all happening so there's something to that being outside but in general i like to see it even just even if you're going to the gym like this is my time Mm -hmm. This is where I'm in my head, I put a pair of headphones on, and I can just sort of be there. Yeah. Right. Versus anywhere else, I'm distracted. I've, I'm being assaulted by inputs all the time. Yeah. But our working in time, when we're working out, right? One, it's we're doing both. Workout is for appearance, for strength, for muscles, for you know health, for all that. But the working in is for our mind, is for our yeah. soul to just yeah. to have a break. Yeah, dude, that's so good. That is so good. You know, I was thinking too, um, in following your work, one of the things I've heard you talk about is the will and the way. Yeah. Like from a from a principle-based uh, methodology to move forward. Would you mind breaking that down for the audience? Because I, I think that anyone and everyone can find a lot of value from it. Yeah, I could say hope equals will plus way, mm -hmm. right? If you have the will, that means you have a belief. You, you have a deep down belief on making this happen, whatever it is. Right. So it's not creating, it's not a pie in the sky. You see a way to navigate through it. Mm -hmm. Will is your positive belief. And way is based off of past experiences that you see a way of doing this. Yeah. That you see, like, okay, I might not have ever done this before, but I've done challenging things in the past mm -hmm. and I can see how I can get myself to do it. Yeah. So hope is will plus way, my desire to do something, plus I could believe I have the tools in place or I can place the tools with people and resources around me to achieve said outcome the way. Yeah. And you mesh those two together, it gives you some serious clarity on how you want to go about any type of task. But if you don't have a positive belief in seeing or envisioning how I'm going to do this, really going to be hard to see the have the will <laughs> for it, right? Because yeah, you just sure. put your brain there. And if you've ne and you're not going to get that confidence of how to figure this out, get over that obstacle, if you've never done any type of overcoming of obstacles in the past where you're mm -hmm. sort of proud of it and you have that confidence like, huh, I've done hard things before, yeah. which brings us back to why I use endurance as a vehicle. I've done hard things. Mm -hmm. I've accumulated small tasks every day of overcoming things that I don't want to do. Like the, it's not an equal thing always that we don't always have to match it. Like our hard things at work. Well, when I went out and I ran in the rain yesterday, it said on my training, I need to run. I got it done or hiking in the snow where I was exhausted from a hard day at work. I could have gone home to the couch, but I chose to turn left and go to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. All those little muscles that you're firing at that point of willpower, motivation, focus, mm -hmm. you're going to draw on that when things get really hard. Yeah. When you say, man, I did some hard stuff. Yeah. I did things when I didn't want to. I can hunker down right now. And that's what we want. We want to build that sort of archive of doing hard things and doing difficult things and building what I call that mental toughness model, m m muscle, excuse me. Yeah. Mindset is a great overarching term. Fixed mindset. All right. Growth mindset. Well, great. What do you do with a growth mindset? Yeah. Mental toughness is yeah. the reps on how you do it, yeah. right? That creates this overarching mindset theme. I grow because I do hard things or not even just always this hard things. People might always say, well, oh, that's aggro. It's more just I've done things that I didn't want to do. I've mm -hmm. done things that were uncomfortable or resistance. I talk about it as easily as like, all right, I'm going to walk in the door from a, a day of work or come down from my home office mm -hmm. and I'm going to spend 30 minutes with my kid. 
or kids, mm-hmm. I'm going to turn my phone off. Like it's yeah. not something I usually do and put it away. Mm-hmm. It's that little tiny little thing of mental toughness. Like I'm yeah. letting it go. I'm able yeah. to overcome that. You're constantly looking for, and I encourage this in all my clients that what is the harder path? And look at it. It always presents itself that you can show mental toughness in so many different situations in your day. You open the dishwasher and you're like, oh, okay. You, you can either close it again really quickly and have somebody else do it. Mm-hmm. Or you can be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to knock it out. Yeah. I'm going to do it, right? Like, you know, all the little difficult decisions that we choose to avoid are the ones that we lean into. Yeah. That builds that those reps of mental toughness. And then when things compound and get really difficult, you have all these um, um, uh, arrows in your quiver to mm-hmm. fight that, you know, those doubts, the negative self-talk, the imposter syndrome, the monkey in your mind just saying you can't, you shouldn't, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. Those you can fight back with, with all the tough things of will and way that you've mm-hmm. done in the past. Dude, I love that. You know, I got a lot of thoughts around that. So first of all, uh, one of my, uh, who's now someone I consider a, a good friend, um, Ed Milet talks a lot about um, keeping the standards you make to yourself, mm-hmm. right? I just kind of heard you describe, hey, look, going left or right to the gym, right? Got, mm-hmm. Taking this meeting, cleaning the refrigerator out, like doing these yeah. different things that need to be done. And one of my standards that I've committed to myself is to always do the hard work first. I realized that when I do the hard work first, it makes everything else behind it sweeter. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a kind of a weird yeah. thing, but it, it totally works. Um, the other thing that came to my mind is you were kind of uh breeding on that. And I'm someone who's um I'm not abnormal. Um, I've been, but I've been through immense suffering in my life, mm-hmm. you know, homelessness and embezzlement and GED and all the stuff mm-hmm. that went through poverty and da 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 da. Um, and the number but one how thing, often, let me ask you there, yeah. how often do you draw on that? You I was draw thinking on about the confidence that. of yeah. that, right? Like where you go, man, I've come from a difficult place. I've yeah. been through the mud. Yeah. Right? Not only can you relate and communicate it then, therefore better with your peers and people mm-hmm. you want to work with, but it's also you stand on this separate sort of piece of real estate where yeah. you go, you know what? I get it. Yeah. I get it. And well, you I was just autom- thinking about that. Yeah, you yeah. automatically have this sort of this this um, strength within you. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what they strip from me, mm-hmm. I have that. Yeah, right. And I'm not afraid of. Well, we don't want our life to go downhill and be stripped mm-hmm. of everything. But man, you've done it. Yeah, you've built yourself up, and and many people in this case, they've got two or three times they've built themselves up. I don't know mm-hmm. if you have two. I'm assuming yeah, you. you probably have. <laughs> Right. <laughs> like it's, yeah. And so that, it just it just allows you to go about business and day to day life and how yeah. you wander through your day of like, man, they can take anything from me. But I know I, I'll persevere because I've done it before. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting you mentioned that because it had me like firing on all that. You know, when I first started this journey about putting myself out there, right, mm-hmm. to start, you know, teaching, speaking, educating, podcasting, all of that. Right. That's mm-hmm. a. That's a whole nother level of, and I swore if I was going to do it, I was going to do it with authenticity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Meaning I was going to share my scars as well as the successes, probably share more scars than successes because the scars led to successes, right? Um, But I was thinking about that as you were talking about it. I draw, the reason I bring that up is because when I I first went to go do this, I had a PR firm based out of New York that really Mm -hmm. wanted to get behind me and start to push me to the marketplace, right? Start getting me on different programs and whatever, um, which I was very grateful for. Um, But they kept coming to me and saying, you know, not everyone is like you. I'm like, actually more people can be just like me and beyond than mm-hmm. you guys can, you guys are possibly understanding. And he kept asking me about the superpower. Like, what is the superpower? What's the superpower? What's the, and I'm like, it's not until right now, like during our conversation, I realized that I constantly use past successes. Actually, I constantly use past sacrifices that led to successes to walk me through the next sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's your story. It's yeah. how you put those chapters together. Mm -hmm. in order to be here today and have that internal glow. I call it a glow. Yeah. Or I also refer to it as a lighthouse. Yeah. People who've been through difficult things, as well as who've persevered, and that's all, not, you know, I don't want to do the everybody has a trauma thing. Like, yeah. course but sort of it's sort of cliche these days trauma is relatant to be your level of sacrifice yeah but um 
standing like a lighthouse there, knowing that come the storm, come the wind, come the mm -hmm. rain, I stand for something. Yeah. I stand for where I came from. And all those chapters in your life have created this glow, which mm -hmm. is the lighthouse, right? Beaming yeah. light that can just say, you know what? I'm here. Yeah. I stand firm to what I what I've achieved, but also my values and principles. And I'm here to help now. Yeah. I'm here to help you navigate through your storm. Yeah. Right. That's so true. And it's a it's a beautiful power to have. Um, and power often gets associated to negativity, but if you use that in a positive way to mm -hmm. guide others through yeah. their storm. Yeah. I'm I also I'm also not a big fan of power, but I do love the word authority. Mm -hmm. Right. There's there's an authority that comes with walking through something and experiencing something and then being able to turn repackage that in a way that it becomes a gift to other people. Yeah. Um, and I love absolutely love that. I was thinking also, that, you know, as part of this whole process, if I'm going to be completely authentic to the the audience, which I've always promised I would be, is while I can I can use sacrifices to produce success and then use past successes to walk through a future sacrifice, mm -hmm. I would be lying to say that I can do that instantaneously. Right. Yes. It may take me two or three weeks to recognize, hey, dude, draw on that thing again. Right. Yeah. I might walk through something difficult for a week or two. And <clears throat> as, as bad as I like everybody else is human, like try to avoid self-pity for a few minutes. You know, yeah. always me. Right. But um, I have been able historically through you know prayer and meditation and other things to ah remember when remember when you remember when you thought yeah. all hell was going to break loose and you were losing everything and everything was falling yeah. apart. You remember how like three months after that, you were like experiencing some massive like blessing, you know, traveling someplace new or doing something. Yeah. And um, the reason I wanted to bring that up is because, you know, in any given time, half our audience is living on high, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're in the middle of success mantra, right? Everything's yeah. winning, everything's happening, everything's awesome. And the other half of the audience is really kind of going through it, right? Yeah. And I want to give them both permission to do both. Right. Yeah. It's okay to be in the sacrifice. In fact, that's one of the reasons that I love you and your work so much is because one of the things that I've taken away from what you do is you're teaching people how to lean into the adversity rather yeah. than to try to push against it because yeah. that, oh, that sure. leaning into changes the game. So let's talk uh -huh. about adversity and pain and, and, and yeah. things like that right now. And how do we position that? Embracing the darkness. Like we all have a dark side. And we're constantly conditioned in today's, you know, again, I'm using big words, society, right? Like that can mean yeah. a lot of things. But in yeah. today's sort of culture, mm -hmm. how we live, to look into the sun. Mm -hmm. It's warm, it's pleasant, it's bright, that's the light and so forth. But the shadow, when we look into the sun, is right behind us. Mm -hmm. And if we just learn to, to turn around and realize that shadow, that darkness is always with us, mm -hmm. and that we can't ignore it. We want mm -hmm. to embrace it. We want to dance with the devil. We want, it's not becoming part of us, mm -hmm. but we know how to dance with it. We know how to deal with it. You know, I don't have to agree with you, but I can have a beer with you. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Like, that's the same thing. Like with difficult uh, um, situations and dark times, I want to sit in it. I want to yeah. learn from it. I want to be there with it. It came up for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think you can say the same thing. And many people who've really been in the in the mud, as I like to say, those who kick out the other side in success, they all, I think to a T, all of them look back and go, that was the best thing that could ever happen. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so when you create situations where you are always, when you're in the mud and you're going someday, Someday I'm going to look mm -hmm. back on this and say, this was a good thing to happen to me. Yeah. I feel like one of the, one of the only ways to work into that path is to be like, all right, well, right now I'm in the mud mm -hmm. and I'm going to freaking like a pig, just get dirty in it yeah, and learn from it and like, see what's going on here and understand it and sort of like be here now. Yeah. I'll kick out. Like that's the confidence I was talking about with you. You're mm -hmm. when you're in the mud, you're like, I know I'll kick out. Yeah. I take it's not a question. That's what I there's a quote I or a, a term I use a lot. It's not a question of if I'll kick out. It's mm -hmm. only a question of when. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for so many things, not a question if I'll succeed. It's only a question of when. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so while we're in that mud, I always say, like, embrace it, realize it, notice it. Learn from it, make mm -hmm. it like you're saying a power where it's like, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I learned from it and I grew from it. And I got yeah. to a point that now I look back and I go, best thing that ever happened to me. 
Absolutely. You know, I was even thinking like, um, my experience has been that adversity always leads to ascension always. Um, mm-hmm. it's a matter of when, and yeah. in the adverse, in the times of adverse adversity, interesting thing happens, uh, in the faith world, they have a pastor called TD Jakes that says new levels, new devils, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I love Every that. time you go through yeah. a, a, a new season of sacrifice and you come out the other end, you get to look back and you're like, man, that sucked. But I'm so glad it happened, right? Yeah. Every time you, that means you've 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 had what I call emergence. You've emerged through the the former you, and now you're into a newer you, and then yeah. you get to start the process all over again. It's like the recycled yeah. hero's journey repeated. I'll, I'll give I'll give you a, a another a quote from the Bible: "Strength is perfected in weakness." Yep. Two Corinthians, right? Like only when you're in there are you getting stronger. Yeah, you're not necessarily getting stronger in when you're at that high. Mm-hmm. Right. It's yeah. if anything, you almost let your guard down. Yeah. You get stronger in weakness. Yeah. Opening yourself up to all the things that will then make you stronger. Strength yeah. is perfected in weakness. Yeah. Well, and I know you worked with a lot of athletes that have done all kinds of all kinds of things. And you know, one of the things in, you know, just even climbing a one of the most difficult mountains, right? Mm-hmm. Your legs, your body's getting stronger as you climb. Although it doesn't feel like it when you're doing it, right? It feels like yeah. things the hurting and sore and falling off. Yeah. I was also thinking that too that in that in those times of adversity, the adversity that I had just went through, when I get when I bump up against it again, it's like I want to hit the easy button. Oh, we, nah, this is no problem. We'll just move yeah. through, that. right? Yeah. And of course, and then I hit another thing. It's like, hey, okay, this is a brand new issue that I got to work through, right? Yeah. Um, what can we do to help people? really lean into and accept it for themselves cuz you know it's it's different it's it's different when uh two individuals or three individuals are talking about you know hey look we've been through a lot of really painful stuff um you know everything from an endurance work all the way to business work to spouse work to all kinds of stuff right there's mm-hmm. all these different things that we face um and a lot of times when you get on the other side, sometimes I feel like it's really difficult to communicate back to the audience hey look I'm still in the fight with you like I still mm-hmm. I still I still see you suffering. Like I still like, but I want to turn that suffering into a sacrifice that leads to a success kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What are some like three or four tactics that we can give the audience today to kind of help them shift towards that adverse? Because I find that 90% of the, well, I'd say 90, 90 is a a strong word. We'll call it a good 70% of the people that I bump into. One of their biggest reasons they're being held back or or Mm -hmm. we like to call stuck it's because they're not leaning into that adversity. They're they're trying to push off or stay away from it or do everything to avoid it, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, the other the other folks are pushing on through. So what are three or four tactics that you use to push yourself um, past the moments where you want to give in or give up yourself? Well, again, it's those reps, right? It's those mental mm-hmm. toughness reps that you're sort of getting into it. Um, mm-hmm. You're envisioning your outcome that you want and you realize that the path of, to get there is going to be a difficult journey. But mm-hmm. that's sort of why you set those expectations of the path, right? Yeah. Um, you, you, If you didn't put a, a difficult uh, task in front of you on the edge of your comfort zone, you're not mm-hmm. growing. Yeah. Right? If you sure. stay in your comfort zone, you're going to stay in that same proverbial box. Yeah. Right. They say fear is a physical manifestation of where our comfort zone ends. Mm. But guess what's on the other side of that comfort zone? Of that fear, (laughs) opportunity, possibility, growth, a new reality. It's all waiting right there. Mm -hmm. But you have to sort of go right up to the edge. Yeah. Take that leap of faith, Uh that next step, and realize it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. I can go here. Yeah. And again, those mental toughness reps will keep growing with you from there. That's the part where it's not even a question of faith. It's a question of little steps that keep moving you forward. Mm-hmm. And then you look back a couple months later and you're like, whoa, I've yeah. come a far away. Yeah. But just keep going. Where is my comfort zone? Where is the edge of my comfort zone? In many things, in business, in family, in raising children, in personal development, whatever it is. And once you start defining that edge, each day figuring out a way to get closer to it, emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is, yeah. and responding into it. Nick Saban loves to say, how you respond to the circumstance, that's mm-hmm. what he cares about. How do you respond to the circumstance? Yeah. Well, circumstances come up all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. And that in those moments, you're going, 
And at first it takes a while, but at, in those moments, once you get good at it, you go, oh, this is one of those mm-hmm. moments. This is one of those times right here. How would I usually respond? And now how do I choose to respond? Mm-hmm. How will I lean into it? Like you said before, right? Yeah. And it's just that awareness, right? Jocko mm-hmm. Willing calls it detach, that you mm-hmm. detach right at that moment and go, all right, here, observe mm-hmm. and now lean in, right? Yeah. But that's the awareness that you want to cultivate. And that's those mental toughness reps. Again, mm-hmm. there's constantly moments that it comes up constantly. We just need to learn to use that muscle. Yeah, but it's there. It's there for yeah. us that in every situation, like even this, right? Like, how do I want to show up for this conversation? Mm-hmm. Right? Do I want to fully lean in, like you said, and said, be a hundred percent there and go at it properly, you know, or do I want to take the easier, more comfortable path? Mm-hmm. Right? Where you know, how is he challenging me on this podcast with some you know difficult questions? Yeah, I want to be there. I want to be yeah. stumped. Versus. Yeah, I can nail this with you in a certain way, or mm-hmm. we can like have a like. Wow, those were some yeah. conversations. I feel like right. a couple of brothers just having a conversation myself. Exactly, so this exactly. Is, this yeah. is how I would be talking if we were having a beer. Exactly, <laughs> so. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you know, so that's speaking. those. That's the main way. Like, there's adversity to be seen everywhere, mm-hmm. and you know, you want to be able to recognize those steps and how do you get better at it? One or two things is just that awareness mm-hmm. right? and seeing that I'm having one of those moments. Yeah. No, that's so good. I was thinking too, you know, I've told this audience repeatedly, you know, we named this, we, the name, the name of the show used to be from stuck to unstoppable, right? We, we mm-hmm. recently changed it to unstoppable with Steven Scoggins. Um, the unstoppable is still my core word. Right. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people think of it as like fairy dust, like, oh, or it's like, oh, unstoppable means you have to break down through walls. Like it just means yeah. you, you know, they're, you're like yeah. the incredible Hulk busting through a mm-hmm. building. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I said to, you know, I've, I've told this audience numerous times. I said to me, unstoppable is simply taking a step to conti- to make continued forward progress, especially when you don't want to. Yeah. Especially well, and- when you don't want to take a step. What you just described, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but the easier way is to pump yourself up and bust through that wall. Yeah. Yeah. The harder way is to figure out how to go around it, Mm -hmm. how to keep things intact, how to not burn bridges, how to maintain relationships and still achieve the outcomes that are on the other side of that wall. Oh, that's so good. There's a harder path all the time that presents, but it's more thoughtful. It's more creative. It's the one the others don't want to take. Yeah. They want a frontal yeah. assault and you're going to be the guy who's going to be like, well, 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 all right, they can do that. Yeah. But where is the, the harder path? The one most people are avoiding is flanking that situation. Yeah. Where's the strategy? I, yeah. Right. Or just sort of, I'm going to educate myself a little bit more before I go about this, or I'm going to uh, uh, align myself with other people or, mm-hmm. you know, how do I want to achieve that outcome? And what other ways are there to achieve it? Like a lot of the clients I work with from an endurance standpoint, they they don't have time to train these hours for a major endurance event. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the art, right? Training, they say, is science. I can go to any website. Actually, these days, ChatGPT can give you the best training plan. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to outdo that. (laughs) But how to make that training plan work for you? the executive who has limited hours and Mm -hmm. still wants to do a 50 mile run or an Ironman triathlon. It's like with family and requirements at church and coaching little league, like, all right, how do we navigate that path? That's the art. And quite honestly, kudos to that person because they're choosing the harder path. Yeah. Do intentional focus. Yeah. And we're going to maximize the limited training time we have. We're going to maximize the limited time that we have with our family. We're going to maximize the limited time I have to do my community service and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But like, there's a way to navigate this, but we, you know, it's not easy, but Mm -hmm. that's why we're doing it because it means something to us. It's part of our values and principles. And now we have somewhere to go. Yeah. You know, something else I heard you mention earlier, and I, I meant to dig in earlier, but we got, we, we, I'm having such a good conversation. I just lost, <laughs> lost track of it. Is this term vision? Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've discovered, and this has been a recent discovery for me. So I've, I've bootstrapped or grinded my way forward for a long time. In the last two or three years specifically, I've been sitting more in times of quiet, especially in times of sacrifice, mm-hmm. envisioning 
what my life looks like after the success has occurred. And I used to think it was fluff. I used to think it was a bunch of BS. And then I started doing it on a continual basis with my, you know, letting my mind do the work for me. And I found myself experiencing the emotions that if it already occurred and Mm -hmm. then lo and behold, it actually short, short line, the thing actually occurring. Yeah. What is your work done with, um, you know, visioning and then kind of, vi- especially into that dream, like into that, you know, the dream version of you kind of thing. Yeah. You're, you're touching on a, a you're, you're opening a big envelope here. Um, That's okay. Because the, the fun part there is absolutely. So one thing you said there is what I really like is that when you envision what the outcome will be, mm-hmm. you also can determine if that's the outcome you want. Ooh. So many yeah. times people do things because they think they should be the type of person that wants that, mm-hmm. right? There's that quote, uh, make sure that the the wall you're leaning your ladder on is the right wall, right? Mm-hmm. Is the climb worth the view? Mm-hmm. So you're doing that by saying, what's it going to be like when I achieve said outcome? And is that then, a, 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 was that worth the climb? Mm-hmm. And me, does that align with my values and principles? Did I even want to achieve that? Yeah. So that's a great thing. But then what I also like about envisioning something and and doing vision work is that you can start implementing who you want to be right now. Mm. There's nothing stopping you from starting to behave and act and have the mindset of the future version that you you want to become. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops you. I can right now start acting. Maybe I can't be all that. I don't have the income or the outcome and so forth of that, but I can start acting like that. Mm -hmm. I can start acting like the next role I want at work. I can start acting like the, you know, entrepreneur with the successful outcome Mm -hmm. and the confidence and the the swagger of that. Absolutely. Now, Mm -hmm. what's beautiful in the physical world of endurance and coaching, and you can imagine this from CrossFit and the gym as well, One thing to envision it and start acting like it. Now, the physical side, you can't be where you want to be. You have to train where you are. Yeah. But what's cool about that is that ties your actions to your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when your actions catch up to who you already are acting out to be, it solidifies it in a totally different way. Yeah. Now you've got the fundamentals and the actions and the physicality, not just in the sports, but also in your business of having gone through the work, having done the learning, having had the failures and so Mm -hmm. forth, so that you've not only caught up to the version you want to become, you get all that wisdom and experience and knowledge with it. Now you're, now you're a thought leader. Mm. Now you do your craft. Now you're a master at it, right? And you're continuing to grow. So that's what I love about envisioning something. It determines your path if you even want to head down that path, but it also allows you to live out that version in the now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so those two things tie in very closely. Yeah. Dude, I love that. Oh my gosh. That's so good. In fact, I was even thinking like one of the big shifts that I had an epiphany, if you will, was at a live event. I'm speaking with a good friend of mine. She invited me to be on stage with her at her event. And um, just before I went out, I had this epiphany, you know, right. Cause I've been, uh, I'm a Jesus guy slash energy guy. Like I'm yeah. connected with John Gordon. He's helped me kind of like figure out where the, how the two intersync. Uh, yeah. intersync. And uh, one of the things that came out was I realized that part of my personal transformation actually started with the emotional intensity in which I was going after it. Mm. So I've recently started telling people that I believe that their emotional intensity, right, okay. must basically be in conjunction or in congruency with their aspirational identity. Yeah. Right. So your emotional intensity is directly tied to your aspirational identity. If Mm -hmm. your emotional intensity is tied to to today and past, that's all you're an experience. But if everything you focus on in the dreams and envisioning and the meditating and the working out and the and the learning and the and the and the mentors and all that kind of stuff is directly correlated with you becoming the next level of you, knowing that to me that's a core element of life. Like it's part of the experience of life is just like seeing how far you can go. Yeah. Like just just see, see what's possible. You know? Is that attitude then? I think there's an there's an element of attitude because how you perceive the journey will will dictate you get more roadblocks or you get more advances yeah. in many respects. Yeah, yeah. But I like the emotional intensity. That's for, because you've envisioned it and it's a part of your core and your values. Yeah. It system. increases belief for me. Yeah. But what I also like about it now, let's go back to versus looking forward now, looking back and go, 
wait a moment, I can shed that weight, that version of myself mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. There's nowhere that it says that you need to be the person you were two minutes ago, right? Mm -hmm. And that many people say that, but it ties into so closely with, okay, and I can live out who I want to be right now. Mm -hmm. So not only are you shedding, yeah, you're living out, right? And that's like mm -hmm. um, Jordan Peterson talks a lot about pushing and pulling. Mm -hmm. We're driving towards a goal that's pulling us, but we're also moving away from something that's pushing mm -hmm. us who we no longer want to be. Yeah. And you take those two energies and you combine them, you're really accelerating your mm -hmm. progress. And that brings us back to your question before. What are some of the tools that you can do to change, not change your mindset, but when you're in the mud, what mm -hmm. to, how to get out of it? Mm -hmm. That is part of that energy. Try to set it up that I know who I don't want to be. Mm -hmm. you know, in the mud and, and the values and principles from that and where I want to go. So mm -hmm. I'm doing a push and a pull. It's supporting me. It's creating momentum in a different way. So often we know who we don't want to be, but we don't know where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That, while that's good, you know, I don't want to drink anymore. Okay. Well, good. But you got to put your energy and time and focus into something new. So yeah. what is that new? So that you have a desire and an excitement yeah. and a motivation to get to the new thing mm -hmm. while you're getting away from no longer drinking. Right. Yeah. I want to play the piano really well. Okay. Stop the drinking, play the piano. Now things are really starting to move. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Probably a terrible example. <laughs> no, I think it's a great example. In fact, I mean, <laughs> what dawns in my mind is then the new thing has to be of something of service. It has to serve you or the community. When many, yeah. many times, a lot of the roadblocks that hold us back, um, may, and we use drinking for this example, are mm -hmm. they're self serving. Yeah. Right, they're they're not um, in a service in in that they're not really bettering you, mm -hmm. they're kind of holding you complacent or still, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. But uh, sure. dude, I have absolutely loved this conversation. This is this is fun for me. Yeah. I don't want uh, time to go by unless uh, without us talking a little bit about your brand new thing with Jesse Itzler and everything. Yeah. Like, talk yeah. to him about this new business and all day well, running. And like, yeah, it's the same thing. It. it sort of ties into everything that we believe in. Like, we started all day running company, mm -hmm. Jesse Itzler, Devin. Levesque and um, another guy, Todd Furnell, who also came from another company that because we want to put the fun back into running, right? Yeah. It's gotten all serious and like results and performance and races mm -hmm. and all that. And for us, it's more like this lifestyle, like how mm -hmm. you and I are talking, how we use running and the fun of running mm -hmm. to sort of get in our head and spend some time there and grow and be creative of doing it with community and sharing and service once again with others, mm -hmm. like helping others. Right. And then just the fun of it, the fun of activity and the fun of a healthy lifestyle. And right. So you do healthy, you do fun, you do community and you change your mindset with that. That's what we're trying to bring it back to the sort of, we have a seventies theme, like when okay. running started in the seventies. Yeah. Sort of like this fun. when Nike and Reebok were going at it for for for, exactly. for titles. <laughs> but before it became too like super specific, like go hard or go home, or it's like everything yeah. was, you know, you know, performance. And mm -hmm. we're sort of on the other side of that. So, and it's the best part about Jesse, right? Like Jesse is very relaxed and fun about everything, yeah. But very strong on mindset, like what mm -hmm. this can do for you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, um, we're excited to have this brand and put on events like we do masterminds and retreats and so forth and races, but races that don't have a winner, mm -hmm. more about overcoming. We have this thing called hell on the hill or for four hours, you're running up and down a short hill. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard. There's no winner. There's no loser. It's just, you're just doing it and you're doing it with people and you're overcoming adversity in a physical way, as well mm -hmm. as in a mental way. And then you're sharing it with, you know, 1500 people. Yeah, dude, that's so amazing. Where can everybody find out more about you and, and about the program and the new business and everything? Well, you can always find us at All Day Running Company. Um, on, on You can easily Google it, easy to find. You can find me as AIMP Coach, A-I-M-P, Advancing the Integration of Mindset on Performance coach um aim coach on instagram or aimcoaching.com those are things that are, those are easy ways but yeah i'm i'm not hard to find people <laughs> people can easily google me and it comes up in a variety of ways yeah man well i dig it you know i think that's interesting because we, we never know who's listening in the moment until you start getting yeah. the things in here right so I, I always want to make sure that the audience has a way to connect with the thought leaders i bring on yeah, um yeah. you Thank know because everybody that i bring on this show is here to serve the public 
right? Yeah. With with everything they've experienced, everything they've gone through, and 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 you know, it's I don't know, dude. You got a really cool vibe, man. You're you're Thank a cool you. dude. And I love the unstoppable aspect too. I mean, because you know, one of my taglines, like if you see my name on Instagram, it's unleashing endurance potential mm -hmm. through health and fitness, right? Yeah. But again, unleashing potential and unstoppable, it's a very similar thing. Like how do we unleash this unstoppable version of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We're in that sweet spot where it's just, and it's not all easy and it's not all balanced, but that we feel good about what we're doing in the current version of ourselves. And we're moving forward to who we can become, like we were just talking about. And that's what unstoppable is, overcoming the obstacles that life will throw in our way. Yeah. And by choosing to do so, you get to win, like Absolutely. repeatedly. I you're, love you're it, dude. Agent. Your agency, right, and choice mm -hmm. builds that confidence. Dude, man, we got to do this again. Yeah, I know we ran a little bit longer than normal, but I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, man. You've, uh, I know you've enlightened us so much. So thank you so much. Well, easy conversation with you. Very I easy. Appreciate really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Take it easy, dude. See you. All right. Thank you. I hope you liked that video. And if you did, make sure you check out this next video right here. Meet people where they are. The next generation of Brian is really aware of where people are and where they want to go. And realizing that their goals may not be my goals. We may not be in alignment of our work ethic. Mm -hmm. Great leaders are able to serve a large array of people where they are. That's going to be the test of your leadership and your, your impact. Never let your influence grow wider than your character runs deep. Which really means we always have to think about our character matters over everything else.